Wow. Just wow. So you all know that Donald Trump survived an assassination attempt at a Pennsylvania rally yesterday. Um, but he was shot in the ear. Now we have a clip of what happened. You see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. Now, after he was shot, he literally fist bumped the crowd. You can see a picture of it now. And you can just see that image, right? That has just secured the election for Trump. Now, this has huge ramifications. I mean, there's going to be extreme authoritarian and fascism. You're going to get a huge clampdown from the states. You've got supporters calling for blood and revenge. Now, if Donald Trump does become president, which I think is likely now, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to go after their political enemies. There's going to be people around Donald Trump who think literally Joe Biden ordered someone to do this. Obviously, that is not true. We have no evidence for that. But given the given how Donald Trump is just a psychopath and that his team are a bunch of psychopaths, we really don't know what's going to happen. But it's going to be nothing good. I mean, the USA is finished. I mean, this is some civil war shit. Now, Donald Trump is a fascist. But this is still wrong. I mean, look, it's an attack on democracy. It makes everyone less safe. We can't have the threats of presidential candidates being killed if they're standing for election. But right-wing scumbags are using this for their own political ends. They're blaming the left. I mean, this is Adam Brooks from GB News. The violent left yet again reared its ugly head tonight. I hope Donald Trump is okay and fully recovers. My thoughts go out to the innocent victim and their family too. When many lefty commentators and media figures call for Trump to be hurt, they rouse the extreme left scum. I'm sorry, but you are the scumbag for making accusations when you don't even have the full facts. You are dangerous. Plus, who are these lefty people in the media who are calling on Trump to be hurt? Literally no one. Now, he also made another tweet. The same people who laugh at milkshake attacks on Farage or laugh at vile remarks made by Labour MPs support this direction of travel towards political violence. If a Labour MP was attacked, the last thing I'd do was mock or make fun. I'd be calling it out, like I have recently with green protesters at Starmer's house. Now, this is a disgusting lie because that's not the case at all. I mean, look, I thought the milkshake was funny. And for all the right-wingers who moan about snowflakes suddenly turn into one, they started saying that, oh, throwing milkshakes on someone, that's political violence, when it's not. And I think the actual political violence, such as assassination attempts, is wrong, okay? Even if I find the milkshake throwing funny, there is no trajectory from throwing a milkshake to a bullet. People are going to kill. They don't start off with a milkshake. Joe Cox, uh, David Amos, uh, they didn't start, the, the, one, the ones that killed them, didn't start off with a dessert and thought, you know what, I've got a taste for this. No, these people intended to kill from the beginning. As it turns out, this is potentially right-wing on right-wing violence. Sky's US partner network NBC News found that Pennsylvania voter records listed a Thomas Matthew Crooks with the same address and birthday 
as a registered Republican, though it was not clear when the record was from. So he was a Republican. He might still be. That's not a lefty, but people are trying to insinuate that. We still don't have all the information and we should change our analysis based on what comes out. But to those who have already made up their minds on where the blame should be, you are disgusting and dangerous. There needs to be a serious discussion about how the media plays a role in political violence. But it won't be discussed because what we're going to have is right-wing pundits shouting from the rooftops, pretending that the right are the real targets and facing oppression. Meanwhile, Jeremy Corbyn's face was plastered on a target with military personnel firing at it with no widespread condemnation. He was a target of an assassination attempt at Finsbury Park. You got newspaper clippings such as this one, uh, which didn't face much scrutiny. Think about all the newspaper front pages that attack immigrants, attack people on benefits, Muslims. You know, they face attacks in the media all of the time. Where are the right wing calling out dangerous messaging in the media? They don't. Now to get down to the brass tacks, right wing violence is simply more prevalent. David Amos was killed by a religious extremist. Now, despite the right wing commentary at trying to trick you into thinking that Islam is somehow left wing, it's like every other religion. It's an ultra conservative ideology. Then we had Joe Cox murdered by a Britain First supporter. And now we have Trump, who was shot by, from what we know, a registered Republican. But even if it turns out that the suspect is somehow left wing, it doesn't mean that the left have a monopoly on violence. It simply isn't true. Look, whilst we've seen much more violence from the right wing, the truth is all political factions are capable of violence. Now, I do think having certain political ideologies and political violence go hand in hand. Look, if you're a Nazi who thinks that other people than white cis straight people should be killed, then don't try and divorce these two things. I do think that political ideologies of the far right means that violence is more likely to come from the right wing. Now, if you see someone on the right talking about left wing violence, calling Antifa terrorists like Lawrence Fox has today, but hasn't said anything about libs of TikTok, you should remind them to be quiet. Now, if you don't know who libs of TikTok is, it's a hate account made by Chaya Rajic. Uh, she's an extreme fascist who makes content attacking liberals, attacking wokeness, especially in schools. Now, over the last couple of years, she hasn't just made content attacking certain people or groups, she has engaged in stochastic terrorism. If you don't know what that means, it's basically targeted political violence that has been instigated by rhetoric, directed at a group or individual, someone who's got a big account who constantly talks about these things, constantly talks about wokeness in schools and schools are turning you gay, uh, they're a threat to your children, that's a form of stochastic terrorism. That's what this account does. It's a huge following, which has been boosted by the likes of Elon Musk and other big right-wing figures. Her content has been linked to bomb threats at schools. NBC News identified 33 instances starting in November 2020 when people or institutions singled out by libs of TikTok later reported bomb threats or other violent intimidation. The threats, which on average came several days after tweets from libs of TikTok, targeted schools, libraries, hospitals, small businesses and elected officials in 16 states, Washington DC and the Canadian province of Ontario. 21 of the 33 threats were bomb threats, which most commonly targeted schools and were made via email. Now, her influence has real-world effects, yet she is continually being bolstered, and Chaya doesn't seem to give a toss. But that's extreme fascism. It doesn't mean that if you think that, you know, those that support privatisation or tax cuts for the rich are more likely to be violent. I mean, there's no evidence for that. But there have been people killed in the name of Lepin causes too, even if those movements were bastardizations of socialism or communism. People still die. But what happened yesterday was wrong. And what happens next will be very, very dark. The US is over.